Hello everyone, Linda Israel, and this is day five, five, not one, not two hands, not ten, five, <laughs> of junk journal gift ideas. This is a collaboration with several members of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. If you haven't joined, check it out. By the way, if you're watching this video and you want to get through it faster or any video on YouTube, just below, click on that little gear and you can change the speed to two times the speed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And and share it with your friends and of course leave comments you know sharing videos sharing social media posts is what helps the originator get seen so please do that and I greatly appreciate your support all right so check the description box for links to the list of videos as well as other information well today our project is to use fabric to make junk journal cards and basically scraps of fabric you could use cloth that you purchase or maybe cut up something but I had some scraps that were left over some of these were uh, I'll show you in some samples upholstery samples and then this sample or piece is actually a piece of fabric that was left over from somebody making uh, half square triangles they had cut off part of the triangle or they had trimmed it it was given to me and I thought I would use it so what I've got here is basically a three and a quarter by six inch, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, six inch journal card. I had some pieces of cardstock that were already cut to a certain size, and I based that size here off of a scrap of fabric in a book page, and I wanted to make it a nice little layered piece. So what I'm going to do first is I've got this little image of or book page from a, what is it? It's a Bible companion or concordance that Bible study and I, it's an old book. It was falling apart and I thought, well, that'll be good because I don't have to worry about, you know, bad phrases or words really in it because it's a Bible uh, study book. So I'm taking the postcard postscript I think it's postscript little collage type thing and I am inking it up in sepia this is new for me I haven't been using sepia uh, in archival ink and I'm going to stamp this at an angle across this little square so you kind of get a unusual texture there it's just a neat little design that's on there Next, I'm going to use some Walnut Stain Distress Ink, and I'm going to go around the edges. I don't need to do all the edges. I know that two of the edges are going to be seen, so I'm basically just going to do those two edges. Now, if you really want it dark, you can go in here and use a blending tool and really come in and add a lot of color. I'm just going to kind of give you an idea. So depending on your distressing, you can really make it look vintage and old. I've got a journal card that I need to apply some Distress Ink to, so I'm just going to go all the way around on both sides. I like using the Walnut Stain because I don't have to use as much to get that vintage look around the edges. Alright, so next what I'm going to do is take this piece of paper and I'm going to glue it to the journal card, but I'm not going to glue out on the edge. I'm going to come in just a little bit because I am going to sew with my sewing machine. and to keep from having to wait till the glue dries. If you come in just a little bit where you know you're not going to sew, you don't have to worry about gumming up your needle. I'm gonna position this at the top portion of my little journal card here. And then I'm gonna glue this down. Again, I'm only gonna put glue basically in the center. You know, I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. Those are live streams dedicated to making junk journals. It could be that we make a complete junk journal or I have a series of how to make junk journal pages and journal cards. So I hope you'll join us. And then on Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. I have live streams where I do mixed media. So we do gel printing and direct to paper and using stencils and sprays and rubber stamps. We just have a lot of fun. All right, so I've glued these pieces together, so let's head over to the sewing machine, and I'm going to sew all the way around. All right, so we're over here at my sewing machine. 
I have a standard needle, just whatever the standard needle is that you have for your sewing machine. I'm using standard thread and I've got it set up to do a zigzag stitch. A lot of people ask me when you use your sewing machine, what are the proper settings? You know, whatever the standard is that you would use for regular cotton fabric, use the same for sewing on paper. And basically it's the same concept. You don't have to worry about ruining your machine. If you can sew through several layers of fabric, you can throw, sew through several layers of paper and fabric together. So I'm going to position this up at the top and I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch all the way around. I don't back stitch when I'm sewing on paper because it's not getting uh, the use and movement like a garment is. So you don't really have to worry about that. But if you feel better, do so. When I get to the end and I want to start sewing the other direction, I will leave the needle down and raise my presser foot and just rotate my paper and then I can start sewing again. So I've sewn all the way around. That's what the front looks like and that's what the back looks like. So let's go back to the main view. Now I have a few more little things that I want to put on here. So I've got a Calico collage image. I believe this is like their her one and a half inch squares of butterflies. I'll have a link in the description box. I love printing these out and then I'll fussy cut them and I have a little Ziploc bag that I put all these images in. So when I want to make something, I can just kind of grab from it. So it's kind of handy to have things ready made. I'm just putting a little bit of Aline's tacky glue on the backside and gluing it down there. And then I have this little piece of lace here. I think it's something that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And you get like three yards for a dollar or something. It's inexpensive, but it's a cotton, ecru colored, ivory colored little lace. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up this little word phrase. This is part of my inspirational white words on black. And I'm going to make a snip here in that lace. It looks like it's kind of curled up a little bit. So I'm kind of flattening it out with my fingers. I'm going to go ahead and take my Aline's Tacky Glue and just basically put little dots on the back side. If it's a, a nylon type of lace that you're using, you can probably get away with using the best glue ever by Scrap Perfect, putting little dots wherever you can't see it on the front side and gluing it down once that glue has turned clear so it doesn't seep up through the lace. Now if I'm with cotton lace, I don't have to use the best glue ever. I can get away with just using the Aline's Tacky Glue. And I just press it into place and the glue dries clear so I don't have to worry about it um, seeping up and making a big mess. I'm gonna go ahead and adhere the little word phrase right on top of that lace. This little butterfly is rather plain, so let's decorate it up a little bit. I've got some Tulip Dimensional Glitter Paint. This is what I find in Hobby Lobby. I have a link to Amazon if you can't get to Hobby Lobby in the description box below. I like this because you get four ounces for under $5. It goes a long way. It's clear with glitter in it, and it's just really pretty. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little bit on here. Now I could take the time and use a fine tip and really go in here, but I'm just going to do this really fast with a paintbrush. Just put a little dollop down and then just use my paintbrush to spread it around on the butterfly. It'll take it a few minutes to dry. I put my paintbrush in some water so that it'll wash out. All right, and I found in my stash some of these little self-adhesive pearls. And I'm going to take three of those. I'm going to cut them apart. They're on a string or a strip of adhesive. And I'm just going to use my scissors here to pop them off. A little plastic backing. And I think this would look really cute right underneath there. So it's not quite dry yet, but you get the gist of it. It's pretty simple, easy way to use your fabric scraps. Let me show you a few more journal cards that I have made. Here's a couple others using the same. I had three of those little triangles, so I went ahead and made three little journal cards using those triangles. So those are three there. And then I had some upholstery fabric. So I still have a piece left. This is upholstery fabric sample. It came out of a sample book. And this time I cut it into a long strip and I used a book page like this 
and stamp the same stamp with the sepia ink. This is a punch, this is another punch, and I used three of the tiny little pearls here, and then the words on there as well. I stamped the background with the, I think it's called Vine, oh, it's a great big, great big stamp, and I just kind of put it down where I knew that it would be right behind my uh, collage, if you will. And then I made these little cards. I've got four of these. These were using that same vine stamp and just kind of stamping it all over. This was a layer of another upholstery fabric sample. So here's another sample that I had. Uh, the pink is another sample. This is a Beeline Designs Butterfly Beauties Cube. There's a set of four stamps. I've colored it with Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist and then they use the tulip glimmer paint on top. So there's another set. So I'll put these kind of down so you can see those as well. So I hope that gives you some ideas of using those fabric scraps to make a journal card to put in your junk journals. And it'd be a great gift because you could take a bundle of these and let's just pretend that you take a little bit of lace and you tie a little bow and you give that to your friend that they could use to make notes to send to someone or maybe they'll use them in their junk journals for note cards so hope you like that idea do check out the other members that are creating videos check the description box down below and i appreciate you taking the time to watch and give me a thumbs up and of course your comments that you may have i i really love what I'm doing and I'm so blessed to have so many of you that help support me in my love of art and keeping me home so I don't have to get a full-time job yet. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.